Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing activatory mutations in the KRAS protein. So at the moment what we're doing is just uh, reminding ourselves of the MAP kinase ERK pathway uh, which uh, KRAS uh, is a part of. Okay, so so far we've got to the phase where um, the um, MEC kinase enzyme has been phosphorylated and it is now an active serine threonine kinase. So what's going to happen is that MEC is going to phosphorylate another enzyme and it's going to activate it. So this final enzyme is another serine threonine kinase. So basically it's going to stick a phosphate group onto this final serine threonine kinase here. So this reaction is catalyzed by MEC here. And the name of this final enzyme here is the mitogen activated protein kinase. Okay, so mitogen activated protein kinase. And of all the uh, proteins in this pathway, this is the one with the most different names. So mitogen activated protein kinase is one of its names. Okay, it's also probably its most famous name is just for it to be abbreviated to MAP kinase. So you abbreviate the mitogen activated protein to MAP and then you just say MAP kinase. So most people will refer to this as MAP kinase. Often if you see it just on a cartoon people will uh, abbreviate it to MAP K like so. But there are other names for it beyond those. Those are all done nicely linked together. Also you might see it referred to as the microtubule associated protein kinase. So microtubule associated protein kinase is another name for it. And as you can see, that has the same initials, basically, as the mitogen activated protein kinase. So sometimes you will hear it referred to as the microtubule associated protein kinase. And finally, there's another name for it, which is ERK. And this is completely different. ERK stands for extracellular signal regulated kinase. So that's why people often refer to this pathway as the MAP kinase ERK pathway uh, because of the two names for this same protein. Extracellular signal regulated protein kinase. Oh, sorry, just kinase. Extracellular regulated, extracellular signal regulated kinase. Okay, so don't let the different names for all these different, well, for all these proteins confuse you. Uh, they're all talking about the same thing, and that's one of the things that can be really confusing about this pathway, because if you look at different flow diagrams done by different people, they call the same proteins different things, and then you wonder, why well, is this a different pathway? And no, it's not. They're just using different names. Okay, right. So now we've got over the different names of this one protein, let's discuss what it's actually going to do. So this is the MAP kinase, and it's now been phosphorylated by the MEC kinase enzyme, and now it's active. So what it's going to do is it's going to phosphorylate other proteins, and two of its major targets, and believe me it has a lot of targets, are uh, the MYC transcription factors. So here we go, here's MYC. And there are a huge number of different MYC transcription factors, but we'll just, uh, for our purposes, it's fine just to say, you know, a MYC transcription factor. And basically what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to stick a phosphate group onto MYC and activate it. And then another transcription factor known as ELK1, okay? And basically, again, uh, this mitogen activated protein kinase is going to stick a phosphate group onto ELK1 and activate it. So it activates these two transcription factors, MYC over here, and also ELK1 uh, over here. Right, now, MYC is going to cause the cell to divide. It's often uh, given the grandiose title of the cell's most powerful mitogen. A mitogen is uh, any species, any protein or molecule or whatever, that um, causes a cell to divide. So it's a very potent um, transcription factor that causes cells to divide. ELK1 is also going to cause the cell to divide, but not directly. It's going to basically increase the expression of um, 
another transcription factor which then is going to cause the cell to divide. So basically, ELK1 is going to go into the nucleus and it's going to go to the DNA. So let's say here is the DNA. Now, in eukaryotic cells, the genes of, um, well, every gene in the human genome has basically uh, upstream of it a region that is not coding but is very important in controlling uh, the expression of the downstream gene. So let's say this is the gene. Then this upstream portion here is what's known as the promoter region. Okay, so this is a promoter region. Right, and the promoter region is not a coding piece of DNA, as I said. Uh, so it's not involved in actually being transcribed and translated into protein. But it is going to control how much of the gene product of this gene that in, uh, downstream of it that you actually produce. And the reason it can do that is because in order to produce this gene product for this gene, what needs to happen is you need to get RNA polymerase coming in here, binding to the DNA, which it does at the promoter region, and then making its way along that gene and transcribing the gene into mRNA. Then the mRNA can be turned into protein. So, the amount of protein that you actually make for this gene uh, depends on how much mRNA you make. So if this promoter region has a very high affinity for binding RNA polymerase, you're going to get RNA polymerase binding more often, and you're going to get an increase in the transcription of this gene. Okay, so you'll get more protein. So, basically, what transcription factors do is they can bind to the promoter region. So let's say this is ELK1 here, and they can alter the... Um, the affinity of the promoter region for the RNA polymerase. And by doing that, they can alter the amount of mRNA you produce, and therefore they can alter the expression of the gene. So basically, ELK1 is going to do this. It's going to go into the nucleus, it's going to bind to the promoter regions of certain target genes, and it's going to increase their transcription. And one of the genes it increases the transcription of is a protein known as CFOS. Now, what happens is CFOS forms heterodimers with another protein known as CJUN. So, when you've made more CFOS, what's going to happen is it's going to dimerize with another protein known as CJUN, and this is now known as a JUNFOS, or FOSJUN, whatever you want to call it, JUNFOS heterodimer. Okay, and this, like MIC, is a very powerful mitogen, basically it causes the cell to divide. So what colour shall we put CFOS and CGEN in? We'll do them in orange. Right, okay, so let me give you just a brief uh, account of the cell cycle, and um, then we can see what CFOS, CGEN, heterodimers, and MIC transcription factors are going to do. So, basically, the cell cycle is the process whereby one cell, so let's have one cell here, turns into two cells, so divides into two cells. So, the first phase of the cell cycle is a phase known as interphase, which isn't really a phase of the cell cycle at all. It's the portion of the cell's life where it's not dividing. It's just living its life, and it's quiescent as far as division is concerned. So this is the portion of the cell cycle where this cell is not dividing, basically. And it can continue indefinitely. It can go on and on and on, so there's no fixed length that interphase is going to last for. Then, the next phase of the cell cycle is the, is the first phase of the active cell cycle. So this is known as G1 phase. Now, what happens in G1 phase is you start getting ready to divide. So certain signals come in, such as growth factors, um, they come in, and what's going to happen is these transcription factors, MIC and CFOS and CJUN heterodimers, which are these final uh, end products of this MAP kinase ERK pathway, these are what are going to cause this transition from interphase to G1 phase. They start the cell dividing. Now, how do they start the cell dividing? Well, basically, they alter the transcription of certain proteins. They are... Um, transcription factors, so they're going to alter the expression of proteins. So what they're going to cause is they're going to cause, firstly, the production of loads of duplicate proteins. 
Because if you think about it, if you're going to go from being one cell to being two cells, then all the essential proteins of metabolism are going to need to be copied, basically. So all of the enzymes involved in respiration, all of the receptors, they're going to have to be copied. That process is started by these transcription factors. In addition, what you need to pr start producing is all of the enzymes which are going to be involved in actually replicating the DNA. So that's what's happening in this first growth phase, or G1 phase. The next phase of the cell cycle is the S phase. In the S phase, or the synthesis phase, what you do is you replicate the DNA. So the origins of replication fire, and in the nucleus of the genome, every single one of the 46 chromosomes is replicated, it's copied. Okay, but they're still at the moment in a single nucleus. Next comes the G2 phase. In G2, you continue the noble work of G1. So you continue duplicating proteins that you're going to have to double the amount of in order to split into two cells. Okay, so that's happening in G2. In addition, what's about to happen is you're about to split this cell into uh, two separate cells. Uh, so in order to do that, what you firstly have to do is split the nucleus into two separate nuclei, and then you have a cell with two nuclei in, uh, and then you need to split the cell in two. So after S phase, what you have got is a single cell with a nucleus which has two copies of all 46 chromosomes. What firstly you need to do in M phase of um, the final phase of the cell cycle is known as M phase, but M phase can be divided into two portions. Mitosis, which is the division of the nuclei, in which basically the cell goes from being one cell with one nucleus with two copies of every chromosome, to being one cell with two nuclei, which both have one copy of all 46 chromosomes. Okay? So that's mitosis, that's nuclear division, basically. And then finally what's going to happen is the cell is then going to split into two. So it splits into two cells, uh, which both have one nucleus, with, which has one copy of all 46 chromosomes. Okay, uh, so um, that process of splitting into two cells is then called cytokinesis. And mitosis and cytokinesis are grouped into one phase of the cell cycle, which is the M phase. So these are both the M phase. Okay, or the mitotic phase. Now, in G2, you're going to have to make all the protein machinery that's associated with splitting the nucleus into mitosis and then splitting the cell into cytokinesis. So that's a whirlwind tour of the cell cycle. The important thing to understand is that when you stimulate a cell in interphase with growth factors, what's going to happen is you're going to activate these MYC transcription factors and these CFOS, CJUN heterodimers, which are going to take you from interphase into G1 phase of the cell cycle and begin the process of division. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video, and then the next video we'll discuss uh, activatory mutations in KRAS.